Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. As Jesus approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. And hearing a crowd going by, he inquired what was happening. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. He shouted, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. The people walking in front rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he kept calling out all the more, son of David, have pity on me. Then Jesus stopped and ordered that he be brought to him. And when he came near, Jesus asked him, What do you want me to do for you? He replied, Lord, please let me see. Jesus told him, Have sight, your faith has saved you. He immediately received his sight and followed him, giving glory to God. And when they saw this, all the people gave praise to God. The Gospel of the Lord. So this is what we heard in the first reading. In those days, there appeared in Israel men who were breakers of the law, violators of the covenant that God had established with the people through Moses. And they seduced many people. And as a result of the seduction, it goes on, and it says they built a gymnasium in Jerusalem according to the Gentile custom. Now there's a very interesting footnote in the scripture with regard to gymnasium. And I'm going to read it to you because I think it's pertinent for you and I today. The gymnasium was a symbol and a center of athletic and intellectual life. It was the chief instrument of Hellenistic propaganda. Jewish youth were attracted by sports and encouraged to join youth clubs. They received training in military skills and in the duties of citizens. And through participation in the intellectual life, many were gradually won over to paganism. Sounds like the university system to me. Nothing happens in a vacuum. Nothing happens in a vacuum. So if you want to know why and how it is that we got from there to here, it's because we drank the Kool-Aid. It's easy to point the finger, it's the government's fault, they're mandating all these, no, 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 no. The devil plays the long game. The devil plays the long game. He doesn't have to take you and I from a 10 all the way to a 1. He's happy to take us from a 10 to a 9, from 9 to an 8, from an 8 to a 7. And eventually, we get to the 1. And you know what happens slowly? Just like the Jewish people who covered over the mark of their faith, we do too. We cover over the mark of our faith. And we lose sight of who we are. And there's a crisis of identity. And you know what happens as a result of that? The light slowly goes out. Slowly goes out. I'm going to be 71. I remember the days of blue laws. 
Businesses were closed on Sunday. There were no sports on Sunday. You went to Mass. And on Sunday afternoon, you spent time with your family. I keep saying, look at this 900-seat church. It was full. What happened? I read a very interesting statistic on the internet yesterday. As a result of the pandemic, there were 14% fewer people now who are going to Mass every Sunday. That's part of the long game. The longer we stay away from something, the easier it is to stay away from it. And I real, I begin to recognize, I realize, I'm doing okay without that. And so you heard that the king mandated that there should be one religion. Those people drank the Kool-Aid too. It's our fault. It begins right here because I compromise my faith. I put things in front of the, of, of the Lord and I say, Jesus understands. He knows I'm doing the best I can. Those are lies. Those are lies. And so this blind man, this blind man cried out to the Lord. I want to see again. I want to see. And he said, your faith has saved you. Your faith has saved you. Are we living in a culture which is blind? I think so. Many of us have been indoctrinated in the ways of the Gentiles, the pagans. We've compromised, we've covered over the sign of our faith. And unknowingly, many of us, I hear this all the time, people tell me, I sent my child to college and they came back without faith. I have it in my own family. But this is the remnant right here. And God uses the remnant to pray for those who are blind. This is a very exciting time we're living in. The work that God is asking us to do is to get on our knees and pray that light be restored.